What is up, folks? Welcome back to my breakdown of The Bear. My name is Justin Kana. I was a chef in Michelin kitchens for almost 10 years, and this has just been a blast to break down. Everybody talked about this episode as the one that gave them a lot of PTSD and trauma, is what they'll call it. And can we just talk about the magnificence of the start of this episode? I listened to Sufjan Stevens, especially this song, uh, in high school, on my way to interviews, on road trips, with my friends. I love this song. And it's only fitting they do a little bit of a love letter to Chicago at the beginning of this episode. This writer, as all my readers know, is devoted to Chicago. No, chef, uh, I'm covering her prep. Um Critics come in and review restaurants sometimes. Sometimes they tell us that they're coming. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're anonymous. Sometimes they aren't. But when they get their publication finally out, different publications have, like, on Thursdays, we publish the food section of XYZ magazine. This is when we will give out stars. This is when we give out accolades. But certain columns come out just randomly. And so it's not, and it's often not something where the publication will reach out to the restaurant and say, hey, listen, we're coming out with an article on you at XYZ time. It can sometimes be random, and depending on the restaurant and the writer and the publication, it can be sometimes like a blindsided moment, and sometimes it can be something that you dread and that you're not really excited for. Based on Carmen's background, I'm kind of surprised that he didn't come to reading this first, and maybe he has read it and he's just kind of processed it. It's hard to say where he's at, but it's also could be telling that he's moved beyond this kind of like accolade striving and he's just kind of wanting to cook good food and same with Sydney seeming to not really care but for all the other employees and the staff who is just really excited about being able to cook with these other talented chefs in their life and to be able to elevate with their execution this is really cool like this is the first positive article that's come out and recognizing them for their hard work and so this is a cool moment to be to see play out sorry 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 yeah. Louis got suspended Louis, apologize to Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. That's all right, Louis. Yes. What about Louis? Um, he needs to know. Do you need to teach him how to work in the kitchen? Today? <laughs> sure, Tina. Today, the day we're running the new program. Um, Chef Sidney, you got that, right? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. This it happens. It totally happens. Stages come in, friends of chefs, uh, chef's friend's son or chef's friend's daughter. We even used to have a guest who was a doctor, and he just would be over the moon to cook with us at any point in time. And so my chef loved just having that relationship with him as a customer. And so it would happen where chef would come in and he would say, hey, here's this guy in his 50s and he's never worked professionally in a kitchen before, but he's going to be a stage today and you need to figure out how to give him some projects and pair him up with a chef de partie and give him some tasks and make sure that he is useful and get some hands on time. But then at the same time, don't just put him in a corner and ask him to pick herbs all day. Like I want him to see some cool stuff. And so this totally happens. Not always with teenagers, but it, it definitely happens. Random stages, oh, requests. Nothing, it's not. That sounds good. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> What's up? I need help with him. Yeah, um, he is, um, you know, getting into trouble, doing dumb shit, is not interested in anything. So you brought him here? This is not inaccurate at all. We had a guest on the Repertoire podcast, Chef John Merrick, and he literally tells this story. And so if you haven't listened to our episode with John, please definitely go check that out because he tells this really touching and emotional and vulnerable story of this exact situation effectively happening to him. And it wasn't his mom. It was his mom, I think, that got him into the kitchen. And it he says it saved his life. And so it's not inaccurate at all. Let me ask you. What's the pickup on risotto? Feel like that's kind of crazy, right? We're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that. 15 minutes. All right, so common misconception, there is a way that chefs and restaurants figured out to pick up risotto in a way that isn't a total ball ache, and it is to parboil the rice. And this was something that was covered, again, I've, I've, I've brought it up multiple times, but like Modernist Cuisine talked about this. It was this idea of you can parboil the rice, put it onto a tray, spread it out, cool it down, and then if you want to just pick it up with a little bit of stock, a little bit of cheese... 
and I know that, you know, f- different folks make their risottos in different ways. So for really wanting to talk about the stereotypical risotto, you can still get the amount of starch release that you need from the rice because it's not fully cooked yet. You still have to cook it and agitate it and uh, get that um, starch release with the stock and the cheese to get that texture of risotto. But, you know, it's not something where you need to start it in the way that Carmen's thinking about it, where you have to start with dry rice every single time on the pickup. Actually, one of the first restaurants I ever worked at picked it up like this, and it was the reason that we had it as a side for, I think it was like 60% of our main courses was served with risotto. Thank you. Shit. Sydney. Blowing somebody down at the Telegraph? Yeah, Richie, that's exactly what's happening. I'm blowing somebody down at the Telegraph. Oh, All right, so first problem, here. sexual oh, harassment. That's not a Whoa. great start to her day. Fellas, I got to talk to Sydney. Excuse me, lizards. Just, um... What's well, super important that a lot of people might not yes. have caught with this scene that is getting applauded in like the filmmaking circles is like this is one take, which is super impressive. It's super hard to pull off, and you can kind of not unsee it once you start watching this episode because it's so. Yeah, this is what you want to. Everybody got so, you know distracted with the other drama that's about to happen. Push out the working man, make room for whatever fucking jabronistas this stupid article is gonna bring. Sorry. If you're enjoying this so far, I would really appreciate a like on this video. It does a little fun confetti thing when you hit it. And also subscribing to this channel, make sure that the YouTube algorithm knows that more folks want to see content like this. It helps me continue to produce content like this for you folks. And I would just really appreciate a gentle tap of that button. Let's get back to it. I, uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, You left the pre-order option open. Okay, uh, no. Yes. uh, Yes. What's that mean? That means we have 78 slices of chocolate cake, 99 french fries, 54 chickens, 38 salads, and 255 <laughs> yeah. cheese sandwiches due up in eight minutes. So yes, yeah, it's fuck. Uh, I fucking... <laughs> Uh, the, the numbers is what really got it to me, right? Cause like, depending on what's on those tickets, it could have been like pretty straightforward, but you just heard him talk about the pars that everybody has on their stations and what's ordered in like is eclipsed that by double or triple. And that just makes your gut just like completely drop out of your stomach. And you're like, oh my God. So it's the visual of the tickets printing like crazy. It's a new software piece, so they don't even know how to fix this. And it's the additional hype that just came from this article that just came out. So there's a ton of interest, and they can't even satisfy the demand that's happening. And now you can just see how it plays out. Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Let me think for a fucking second. And sweet, all right? I'm going to take green tape, make those sections. Louis, I want you to get the sandwiches, put them in the corresponding sections. Copy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, sweet, bag. This is so crucial that Carmen just goes into like overdrive. I mean, it's like a Super Saiyan moment, right? Like that is the what's happening here. I'm going to plug the course again because we have this concept that we talk about, which is question the process when the variables change. On any normal service night, they don't have to custom tape off a green tape section of the pass to have three different types of sandwiches. But... This is not a normal service. Like, for all, this is crazy. And so, being able to change the process, how you're going to navigate something like this is so crucial. And the ability to switch gears like that and be this adaptable, like, that's why I teach this stuff because it's, it, it is what gets you through a day like this. The average lay person seems like it is impossible. There's no way we're going to be able to get out of this. Uh, so, everything, fire everything right fucking now. Okay, I'll fire everything now. I just was finishing Step talking out. to Marcus and Step I, out. Okay, I'm going to talk to Mark. Fuck off my Xbox chef now! In any other time, in kitchens, in collaborative environments, I am all about, like, the the collaborative, bring ideas together, rub off on each other. But in moments like this, there needs to be, like, this dictatorial relationship. Every Sometimes, you know what I mean? And this is case by case. But, like, this specific moment, Sydney having her way of thinking about it and not being aligned with how Carmen wants to tackle it, that is just a recipe for disaster. Pardon the pun. But Carmen being able to say, like, nope, we're going to fire everything. We're going to follow this system. And that's what we're going to roll forward with is, like, you kind of need to take the person with the most kind of experience in a situation like this and just have them run it. It's not like it's not a time to have a a, a team meeting and do a whiteboarding brainstorming session. It's like this is all hands on tech. We need to absolutely just crush this out. Corner. The phone ringing in the background is also like, oh, my God. 
41 dogs, six freestyling. Somebody get me a fucking Sharpie that fucking works. Fuck. <laughs> the worst. Expoing yes. with a dry Sharpie. Uh, fire two more cakes to go. No. Fire no two more cakes. No more to fucking. Go. They just are you it fucking dead? One thing that I didn't really understand about all of this is like, why not shut down the ordering? Like the fact that the tickets are still printing either is getting them caught up on all of the orders that got logged by the system. And it's like, you need to stop taking new orders. Like you need to go in and, and adjust your hours. Like that's another counterintuitive thing of like slowing down and having someone like Richie, or even if Sydney's not in a mental headspace to be like working on food stuff, having her go into the tablet and be like, hey, I need you to like shut us off or, you know, whatever that the settings need to be in the system to make sure that this problem doesn't come consistently get worse. And different business owners have different ways of operating this stuff. But like continuing to have this compound is not helping anybody. Yo, Carmi, I did it. I figured out what I was doing wrong. Why are you fucking with me? Why are you fucking with me? Why are you fucking with me? Huh? Get the fuck back to work! saw a lot of comments come through specifically on Marcus's attitude and behavior during the scene. And I kind of got to agree with it. Like for someone who admires these high caliber chefs so much and really gets jazzed about these like elevated execution pieces to you would think that he would also have a lot of pride in the thing that he does on the day to day, which are the chocolate cake pieces. And so to see him just completely like throw up his hands and be like, I'm only going to focus on these donuts. I'm not really going to go into crisis mode. I'm just going to be super lax. Isn't something that you'll normally see in a kitchen environment when the chef is literally screaming at every single person in the in the kitchen. The entire vibe of the kitchen changes. And that not coming through on someone like Marcus is weird to me. He's never showed this behavior before of like switching into this other gear. But I would like to think that he would want to be helpful. He would want to step up to the plate. He would want to perform after especially such a glowing review coming through the restaurant. And so this this confuses me too. I, I can tell that they're trying to play off of him not being excited about his normal stuff and being more excited about something like donuts. But yeah, this is weird to me to see him just kind of give up almost during this scene and go, walk Jeff, out. We go. Yo, we good? Jeff, we good? This, this I get. So Sydney being this upset after, we talked about it already. She got sexually harassed. We were talking about getting expressed distrust towards her as a professional. She has this moment of wanting to be proud about her dish getting appreciated by a critic, but everybody's downplaying it. And then this is new. She's been pushing for delivery for ages, and it was probably just a simple didn't click the right button. And now everybody's in chaos. Chef's pissed off. The whole team is in shambles. And she tried to help. She tried to jump in with Marcus with the cake thing, and that ended up flopping because Richie ran into her and the cakes ended up dropping. Then she has this confrontation with Richie where she ultimately ends up stabbing him, and Carmen's just like a good his screws are all loose like he's not speaking like a coherent human being and so this is hard at least she jumped in and tried to help whereas marcus again wasn't very helpful and so seeing her kind of give up in this moment makes sense marcus not so much for me we i've had Jeff, this feeling I can't before um i quit is what's going on quit yeah chef I right now quit you quit right now <laughs> Okay. So I think a lot of people got frustrated with the way that this show portrayed individual team members, because to those of us who have worked in restaurants, it was very clear the way to bail ourselves out of a situation like this. It's changed the process, similar to what Carmen did at the beginning, give individual people responsibilities, set up some sort of assembly line, and just churn out the orders until the queue is empty. And to see... Sydney walk out to see Marcus get frustrated and also walk out and to see some of the like 
plans fall to pieces is not exactly how a lot of us would have satisfyingly wanted to see this show play out, but this episode play out. But like this had to work for TV. All of these little dot points that needed to play out had to show up on screen. And so, of course, it doesn't exactly play out the way that other uh, others of us would have handled a situation like this. So like the ex- perfect example, the dishwashers standing in the back doing dishes Probably not exactly how I would have set up the the brigade structure here. Richie saying he was going to work on fries and then switching to Jardiniera. Probably not how I would have gone about this. Same thing with like Marcus getting excited about a donut. I I, I, I don't know. Like and and so this is this is this is hard to watch. This is really hard to watch. This moment of like just wanting to give up, surrounded by chaos, unsure what to do. Yo, cousin, there's a fucking line. Are we open or not? So beyond saving. So I hope you enjoyed at least watching a couple clips from this with me, because I know for a lot of folks, this either made you stop watching the show, this is the one where you were really like, oh shit, they really understand us kind of episode. This has been episode seven of The Bear. Thanks for watching with me. I'll see you for the last episode in episode eight. My name is Justin Kana. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you folks soon. Have a good one.